Good morning. I'm the one who writes about nonsense <laughs> in a way that is uh, full of delight, and I revel in that. And uh, I, I love that story. Thank you. And I'm delighted to be here amongst people who um, can look at a pond and read it like a text, to look at an emergency room, look at a body, and read it as I might read a poem. Um, it's always a pleasure, I think, or almost always a pleasure for people to read about things that are very familiar, right? For me, that would be reading about uh, other Asian Americans, other women, uh, other people from Brooklyn. Um, but I think it's, I think the opposite is true as well, that it's um, really interesting to read about things that are foreign. For me, uh, well, for many people, um, in order to experience that, they might travel to a foreign country to experience the exotic. But for me, I read essays on science. Um, the world of science and the language of science is a completely alien, unfamiliar, and exotic world. It's intriguing and even frightening. And that's part of the intrigue, of course. I enter into this realm and I feel completely inspired and sometimes that becomes a poem. But because I work best in a routine, I don't wait for inspiration. I often write, but not completely write about science. Most of my work actually is about all different things. I, my subject matter ranges quite a big, quite a, um, quite a lot. Um, but about seven years ago, I decided that I wanted to try and write a whole manuscript that was inspired specifically by different uh, aspects of science. And because I love reading the science section of the New York Times, that immediately became uh, fuel for my poetry. And um, I think um, Stacy doesn't even know this, uh, but my book was just accepted. So it'll be published uh, next year by Norton. Thank you. Um, I'm going to read a couple of poems uh, to give you a, a little bit of an example of, of what I do because it's a little, um, it's respectful and disrespectful at the same time. This is called Nepenthe, which is one word, and uh, it comes from an article I read, let's see, uh, in the New York Times uh, a year ago written a very short article by Henry Fountain called A Slippery Slope is the Secret Weapon of Some Pitcher Plants. So this is my poem, Nepenthe. Opens with a quote. Quaff, oh quaff, this kind Nepenthe. That's from Edgar Allan Poe. The Nepenthe, Raffelsiana, or pitcher plant, a bowl-shaped leaf with liquid at bottom, acts like an animal predator to attract then digest insects, such as the itinerant ant that scouts around the dry lip, then bids colony members follow only to slip inside due to increased humidity or nectar secretion. Scientists measure this completely passive phenomenon using tiny electrical probes. Just what is the reward for such studies? botanical insights, lessons on symbiosis or unpredictability. For me, more than the thought of wet lips or Homer who, who mentioned Nepenthe as a potion to dispel one's misery, I think of memorizing poetry in the fourth grade. Edgar Allan Poe, while longing to forget the lost Lenore, composed verse after verse that implanted recollection that drug, that conductivity, that pleasurable sensation of stumbling into memory. Unfortunately, a lot of what I write about ends up being about extinction, um, which is a big topic, probably only second to pandemics right now. Um, so I'll read this uh, second poem and I'll stop there. This is called Icebreaker. Scientists, 
unnerved by stretches of melted ice around the North Pole, cannot discern whether the pace of change is mostly greenhouse gas or natural influence missed in earlier forecasts. Shipping magnets and drillers of oil are not displeased for the now watery sea routes and care less how polar bears scavenge to eat and reproduce. Ice retreat? Ice deficit? Thawing permafrost? Arctic oscillation? That we cannot care beyond filling a gas tank or wondering if a summer patio will be underwater may be the, may be the ironic side effect of evolutionary biology, or just plain narcissism, or just plain laziness or lackness, or just plain greed, or just plain brainlessness, or just plain lack of imagination, that Arctic sinkhole. Thank you.